Ladies and gentlemen, the most viewed chess match of 2024 just happened a couple of hours ago here in September of 2024, and it is not anything that you would expect. One of the most fascinating collaborations that I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to share this chess match and the lore behind it with all of you. This chess match was played between the massive streamer, I Show Speed, the younger audience may know who I'm talking about, and the world-famous boxer, politician, man of the people, Manny Pacquiao, who the young audience might know who I'm talking about and the older audience might know who I'm talking about. Speed is a very popular streamer. He does a lot of really cool and athletic things that I could never imagine doing, and he's recently been traveling the world. He went to Europe, uh, and now he's in Southeast Asia. He's in the Philippines, I think, at the moment. And he went to Manny Pacquiao's home. Now, Manny Pacquiao plays chess. I've known this, uh, and uh, it would be super cool, by the way, to you know, maybe we'll do a little... He teaches me a little bit of boxing. Uh, I teach him a little bit of chess. Um, I think he's like master level and he played speed and they played and they had 200,000 live viewers to put that in perspective we just watched the speed chess championship if you don't know what that is and you clicked on this video because you're here from the youtube algorithm because you watch speed or you watch boxing uh we just had our biggest chess event of the year between magnus carlson and hikaru nakamura uh and it had like a hundred thousand uh live viewers uh the two of them were playing as well as uh, some other very good players like Hans Demon and Ali Reza Farouja. They had 100,000 live viewers. This chess match played in Manny Pacquiao's home with people around had 200,000 live viewers. Okay. Uh if you're new to chess and you're watching this, welcome. Not that hard of a game to get into. All you got to do download chess.com, play a couple of bots. Uh you can watch me for your uh instructional beginner content. Um and uh yeah, welcome to the chess world. We're kind of dorky, but like what other game can you intellectually dominate your opponent from start to finish and feel mentally superior? Battleship? I don't think so. So I'm going to show you this game. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we, we can learn a couple of things and we can get into the lore. And actually, the end of this game has a puzzle to solve, which I think will be interesting to some of you. So they sat down, they played E4. Speed before the game, he was, he was saying that he's top 10 in America and number 56 in the world. Um... I don't think that's fully accurate. I think he was trying to get into Pacquiao's head, but listen, it's going to be tough to get into Pacquiao's head. He's been in the ring with some of the best uh, combat sports athletes of all time. Speed opened the game with knight to c6 uh, after trying to put the knight on this square, but uh, Manny corrected him. Knight c6. This is called the Nimsevich defense. Clearly, uh, he's been studying his openings. And Manny played knight to f3. Always good to put the, uh, the pieces in the center of the board. For any newbies watching this, the center is very important. Speed played e6. Not a bad move. Also playing for the center. Maybe he's going to advance like here uh, to d5, for example. Um, and Manny, very principled man. Two pawns in the center if possible. So if any of you watch this and you're going to go play on chess.com after this, whether you're new or you've played a lot, two pawns is good. Now, unfortunately, Speed's uh, big talk before about being top 56 and whatnot, it backfires here a little bit mildly. He plays b5. You got to be very, very careful moving pawns, especially on the edge of the board, out because the bishops are snipers. You know, they're from a distance and already Manny can capture this pawn. And he plays here. I think he thought about it maybe, but listen, when you have a level disparity, especially in chess, and especially when you play, I'm not talking in the case of speed, but some of you may want to play with your kids or something like that. You don't want to mercilessly destroy them in like the first few moves. So I think Manny... Uh, you know, he's just like, look, I'm going to develop my pieces. I'm going to let Speed get into the game. Speed now goes for the double haymaker. Uh, he's attacking Manny from both sides of the board, B5 and H5. Uh, but again, you want to uh, focus on getting your pawns to the center. You want to get your knights out. you got to be very careful making moves like this because you don't actually make genuine improvements to your position. You could have long-term weaknesses. Now, Manny, very principled. The best way to meet an attack on the side of the board is to punch them straight in the face, which he does not do here. That would have been assault. Uh, although I would imagine if Manny punched somebody in the face in the Philippines, like they would ask that they deserve it. I, I don't think he would get into a whole lot of trouble. Um, D5. 
And now Speed is in a little trouble because he's going to have to either open up his king or go galloping, you know, with, with his knight. And that's why it would have been actually better for him to occupy a little bit more of the center himself. But d5, knight b4. And by the way, also if anybody watching this is new to chess, this thing gives you an evaluation of who's got a better position. And right now it is plus three. That's a, a big advantage for white. a3, attacking the knight, trying to take it. Knight's got to go. Knight to a6. And for long-term viewers of this channel, because this is a very big collab of people who might potentially not play a huge amount of chess yet, I will be referring to those folks and welcoming them into our world. So hopefully you don't get uh, annoyed. Now Manny goes, all right, I got to take this pawn. It's free. It's a free pawn. Got eyes over here. Don't necessarily want to capture. Uh, and we have pawn takes d5. And now pawn takes d5. So the line to the king is open. Of course, black can block the attack on the king with one of those three pieces, but it's a good move anyway. Rook b8, good move by speed. He attacks this bishop. That bishop has no protection. Some of you wondering why we don't take this. Well, not all trades in chess are the same. Even though that trade is worth three points each, the bishop is very powerful. It controls a lot of squares. It makes it a little bit difficult for white to move. And white now cannot castle the king to safety because you are not able to go through a check. So that is why we don't take. And instead, Manny... Backs the bishop up to c4. Very reasonable move. Speed continues to attack with the flank pawn. He's trying to go pawn to h3. And uh, Manny attacks the queen, defended by the knight. Now here, Speed does what a lot of beginners do. He sees that, oh, my queen's hanging, but I could take the bishop, so he does it. But Manny's like, wait a minute, Speed, don't do that, because I'm protected. And listen, everybody goes through this phase in their uh, chess career, when they're like, ooh, peace, I'm gonna take it, bam, but it's not the best move. And now Speed plays a great move, which is pawn to f6. Blocks the attack, and that pawn has a lot of support. And obviously, this is not something White wants to capture, because it's only worth one point. You don't want to lose the bishop for the pawn. But we have bishop takes uh, h4. And um, now Manny is up two pawns, and he's going to castle. Here, if Speed wanted to bring the uh, rook down, he could. But uh, I think he just kind of wanted to charge with pawns here. F5, unfortunately not a good move. This is a pin. The pawn is pinned, meaning if it moves, there's something on the same line behind it that will be captured. And here I think Manny just was being a bit nice. Decides to castle his king. Does not take the queen. Again, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of sportsmanship being displayed here. Doesn't just want to blow the opponent off the board. And I think here, Speed was kind of annoyed because he saw that he couldn't move his queen. Like, anywhere he moves the queen, uh, it's going to get captured. But we got to remember, just because a piece is in danger, it doesn't mean that you don't have help. So bishop goes to e7. And now Manny, very principled, he's like, all right, well, my bishop's targeted, so I'm going to capture here. And a very, uh, very smart decision when your opponent leaves the king in the center of the board like this and you have castled, always putting the rook on the open file is going to lead to good things. And here it leads to the winning of the queen. So we have pawn to c6. Manny takes the queen. King takes e7. Now he plays pawn to d6 check. This is a fantastic move. Defended, also taking away valuable squares. The king goes back to e8. And now the letter M appears in the evaluation. It means that with perfect play, Manny Pacquiao should win this game in 15 moves by getting to the king. And by the way, here he, he, he develops a knight. He hasn't yet moved that knight, so it's always a good idea to bring the knight to the center. This is the best move. It attacks the king. This is a check. It's also a fork, a double attack. We attack two things at the same time. And it, the queen is creating what's called a battery here with the bishop attacking on the same line. And that would have led to the winning of material there because you would have captured this and then you would have captured again. And then you would have tried to eat a little bit more. But okay, knight bd2. When you have a winning position, a lot of things are winning. And here Manny plays bishop takes knight. This is actually a really trappy move. Because normally what you would do here with black is you would very quickly take. But Manny notices that bishop takes knight removes the defender of the e7 square. And here, speed is a move away from getting checkmated. So Manny clearly trying to set up a checkmate there. But speed captures. Now, the way you set up a checkmate is you prevent the king from escaping, so you play knight to g5, but all right, Manny plays queen e8 check, starts hunting the king, knight here, anywhere the king moves, and by anywhere I mean literally only up one square, uh, you can take the rook, king takes, and now the queen can continue to capture, and that's actually a fork, but obviously here, you don't have to play the best move, you just have to win the game, Manny gives a check with the knight, and takes the bishop. 
One thing I do want to point out though, it's actually not too late to screw this up completely and lose the game. Some of you may be thinking, well, white is up a whole queen and is going to take and take and take and take and take and take and promote a second pawn. Remember, pawn's getting to the end of the board. But there's actually a way to lose uh, and it's back rank checkmate. So you have to be careful in chess material matters, but also the safety of the king. Back rank checkmate is when the king is trapped on the last rank and cannot escape. So honestly, a good move in all these positions is something like this to give your king a little bit of breathing room. It's called a luft. But okay, Manny is a very experienced player. He, cra he, he, he captures the knight, rook c3, queen goes back to e2, and pawn to c5. Now, here's something very funny happens. So the way you win this position with white is exactly what Manny does. Uh, he gives a check, he takes the pawn, and then he takes another pawn, and he's simply going to make another queen. He's going to not get mated, and then he's going to use his pieces to swarm this king and deliver checkmate, surround the king and attack it. But speed here issues a challenge, and this is actually kind of fun. Uh, you know, in chess, bounties would be pretty humorous. Like, if you needed to win a game without moving a certain piece, or you needed to win a game by only moving a certain piece, or moving a certain piece a certain amount of times, or whatever. So at this point, speed is like, listen, Manny, you're probably going to beat me, but if you're really so good, I want you to beat me with this guy. Now, a lot of you chess elitists watching this video going, why are you covering this? This is such poor chess. I don't know why you're a cranky old British man, but that's what I imagine that, you know, YouTube commenters who are mad sound like. Um, well, yeah, how are you going to do that? How are you going to checkmate this king with this pawn? Like, they're on opposite ends of the board. How will you possibly do that? Now, one hack is that I guess you could promote the pawn to a queen, although it's not a pawn anymore. So you're going to have to bring the king to this side of the board by clearing everything and then checkmate. That's not easy. So queen e6 check. King goes up. And Manny now begins taking a bunch of pieces. He gives another check. Now he pushes. And I think his logic is let me eliminate the black pieces and then walk the king over to the edge of the board. So he gives a check. And now this is a fork. The rook was blocking the pawn, but now he takes the rook. This is going to make the defensive resistance for black a lot harder uh meaning it was always going to be difficult but remember we're trying to we're trying to bring the king over there like we have to it's like a movie like a heist you know we uh we got to bring the king over so he t he gives a check and he gives another check and maybe what i would do here is i would take the pawns away so make it so that black has no choice but to move only the king and then what you can do is you can kind of cut up the board and force the king to the edge of the board and then push the pawn so manny goes knight c7 Speed walks, knight b5, speed walks, now we give a check, and now king c2. So we're close, right? And speed could have ran that way, and then we would have had to force him out. But this is checkmate. There's a lot of different checkmates, but we have to do it with the pawn. So how are we going to do this? So Manny decides, you know what? I'm going to move my rook over here. Why? So that the rook is never in any danger. Black plays king b3. Now we give a check. Now the king is stuck in the corner. Again, there's like 37 different ways to win here with white. Queen d2, king b3. And now we force the king out, and Manny decides I'm going to grab a pawn. Only thing Manny has to worry about here is stalemate. Stalemate being you surround the king, but it can't move. And there's no legal moves, and the game ends in a draw for some reason. So we have g5. Speed moving, the only thing he can move. Manny brings his king, g4. I think he's still kind of trying to figure this out, Manny. He's like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to run the king to the corner? Almost like solving a Rubik's Cube, if you will. He's trying to give away his knight, and he does. And Speed takes the knight, because... You're in shack, you might as well take the knight. Queen before king a6. And now Manny comes up with something very clever. Basically, he's like, okay, I need to checkmate with the pawn. How am I going to do that? Because if I just walk the king back, it, the pawn is never attacking the king. It's just going to stand there. So here he realizes, I think I want my king on that square so that my pawn can checkmate him. But then the king is going to run to the corner and the brain starts turning and the gears start going and... He comes up with this very smart idea. He leaves the king stranded here, right? So he stops black from advancing, and he calculates very correctly, I need to get this pawn to a7, and I need to make sure the king is stuck. So watch this. He brings the king in front of the queen, and now he starts pushing the pawn. 
and he calculates it so that this pawn is going to get there and the queen will cut off the escape to the corner at the very right moment. So king here, a5, king b8, a6, king a8. Now he gives this check, or he could have given it on d5, and he checkmates speed with the pawn that speed told him to checkmate with. That's, that's pretty clever. That is perhaps the, the coolest thing about this game, other than the fact that it was watched by 200,000 people live and now 4 million people saw the live stream. Um, and that's, uh, you know, this is, um, this is a fun thing, you know, because I don't know how many of you, you can let me know in the comments if you're a Speed fan and you made it this far in the video, you know, because Speed is, he's so big as a content creator and his audience does skew a little bit lower. It's generally like teenagers and, 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 and maybe even like 12 and 11 year old, 10 year old, etc. Um, but chess in particular, it can be enjoyed by 10, 11, 12, 13 teenagers, young adults. Uh, and it's kind of wild when these like collabs come together of Speed and, and Pacquiao, you know? 200,000 people watched this game live. It wasn't, it wasn't an elite chess game, but Manny is a really good player. To come up with this sequence really shows his class and his skill level. He's obviously like near a, a, a full mastery of the game. And that's, that's super cool. Now we'll see how much chess speed wants to play while he's uh, doing backflips and crazy athletic stunts and playing football with, uh, you know, uh, the side man and, and you name it. Um, but uh, listen, speed, if you, wanna, if you want a secret chess trainer, we don't have to tell anybody. You know, we can train you for a rematch. Also, speed and chess boxing would be bananas because he's probably the most athletic streamer I've ever seen. And... Um, one more thing, by the way, when Magnus Carlsen won the Speed Chess Championship, he tweeted, I show some speed. So chess players know speed exists. <laughs> like they, these dude, this dude is transcending uh, not just general, you know, uh, streaming and, 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 and all that stuff. Like uh, even uh, the best chess players in the world know he exists. So that's uh, and they, they don't watch much content at all. So that's quite cool. And Manny is Manny. So. Shout out to all the, Philip, uh, the, the folks in the Philippines watching. Um, I was going to say the Filipinos. I don't know if that's uh, Filipinos, Filipinas um, uh, watching. And uh, I mean, there's a bunch of chess in the Philippines. The hype is, is real. There's content creators also from the Philippines. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, the scene there in chess is, uh, is, is really cool. So unexpected collab of 2024 and uh, just so happened to be the most watched chess match. So. Welcome to the chess world. If you're a fan of Pacquiao, if you're a fan of speed, uh, and maybe we'll see some more chess from them in the future. Maybe I'll go to the Philippines. That might be on my bucket list of 2025. That's all I have for you today. Get out of here.